we have The Simpsons predicting that AI will take over the world. Displacing workers and replacing food, in one episode of The Simpsons, Homer is working at his nuclear power plant. Well, I don't know if you can call what he does work, but he was there. Anyways, Smithers calls the plant workers into his presentation room, I guess, and presents them with an army of AI robots and says, you will train them and they will replace you. That's pretty unsettling coming from a show that's been known to actively predict the future, but even more unsettling when the episode's claim has actually been backed by tangible data. In a report released by businessinsider.com in 2023, the World Economic Forum calculated that 85 million jobs will be replaced by robots by the year 2025, meaning that here in 2024, we're pretty much already halfway there. I feel like robot labor could be a good thing if it didn't mean causing a crap ton of people to lose their jobs and their only source of income. All right, season 28, episode two of The Simpsons, entitled Friends and Family, has a scene where Marge and Homer are using VR. More specifically, they're eating VR food. They have VR goggles on and start eating virtual reality fudge through straws. It's, of course, pretty silly. But there is actually a company called Flavor 5 Studio dipping into this type of technology. They created this project called Aerobank. Banquets RMX. Now, this is pretty hard for me to explain because with how crazy technology is getting these days, I really feel so out of touch. Like, I feel like a 45 year old man in the 90s trying to decipher what Pokemon was, or Pokemon, as every parent called it. So, from what I can tell, this is almost like a virtual reality art project. It's described on their site as exploring the intersection of food and mixed reality. Basically, a put on VR headsets and dine in VR. Project's goals to reframe human perceptions and change the way we experience food. I still can tell if you're actually eating something and you're just in a VR world, or if you're like tasting fake stuff. I don't know what the world is anymore. When this technology comes out, if you guys want to fund a trip for James and I, we'll be happy to review it for you. Next up, we have Trump 2024. In an episode released in 2015, long before Trump's original presidential campaign, you know, way back when his catchphrase wasn't MAGA, but simply just, you're fired, the Simpsons released an episode, specifically episode 17 of season 11. And in this episode, Homer Simpson is seen flying past a sign that clearly reads Trump 2024. To take things a step further, The Simpsons also predicted the 2023 incident in which former US President Donald Trump was arrested during his presidency on the same day that the new Barbie was released. In episode 14 of season five, Lisa versus Malibu Stacy, a news report is shown on TV documenting the release of the new Barbie doll. In our case, however, it was the new Barbie movie. At the end of the news report, the news anchor quickly slips in the fact that the US president had been arrested. And the segment ends. Trump was arrested the day that Barbie hit theaters. I know this one happened in 2023, but it just goes to show how scarily accurate The Simpsons have been in the past, making this list all the more terrifying. Next up, we have 2023's Treehouse of Horror segment, Wild Barts Can't Be Token. At the start of the episode, Mayor Quimby announces that the art museum is closing and that all art will now be sold as NFTs. Now, NFTs were a thing well before this episode was out, but AI art has really become more of a thing and more of a concern really this year. The idea that art museums could start closing up, being replaced by people just throwing on VR headsets and looking at quote unquote art in a virtual reality setting, it's really not that far fetched. I mean, uh, thank God Dune Part 2 came out because it was really looking like movie theaters were going to be done for by the end of this year. Anyway, this whole thing is just really creepy and with how accurate The Simpsons are about things, I could see this one happening very soon. Next up, we've got Economic Collapse, which is ironically predicted in the same episode that showcases Trump's 2024 presidential campaign, season 11, episode 17. In the episode, we see the United States economy taking a nosedive right into the ground. Is it BS or did a group of economic analysis studying the trajectory of economic fall predict either a collapse or major restructuring of the American economy. Here's a hint. It's the second one. But I don't really think this prediction is exclusive to America. We are seeing major economic downfall in many countries, which isn't really surprising considering what we all went through in 2020 and the years that followed. You know, when restaurants shut down and remote working became the norm. And with the state of the world right now, we are looking at a pretty bearish economy. I don't actually know if that word applies here, but basically we're looking at a downwards trajectory. 
trajectory. Next up on the list, we have hover cars. Now, hover cars are, of course, not unique to The Simpsons. Hover cars are something we've seen in science fiction since the dawn of science fiction, basically. So it's not like The Simpsons came up with something mind blowing here. But what is pretty mind blowing is that there is a company called Samson Sky that's saying they're going to bring out a flying car in 2024. They've already made it, actually. It's just not readily available yet. They call it Switchblade, the world's first flying sports car. Now, from what I can gather from the promo video of this thing, uh, it's really more of just a car with retractable wings that doubles as a car sized plane. The type of hovering vehicle you're probably thinking of is not really what this thing is, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, retractable wings, it's very like Batman ish. I don't know what the regulations will be for something like this, though. I mean, like, are you gonna need a pilot's license to fly it? How can traffic be controlled in the air with all these like flying cars zipping around? It's a lot to consider. We're not going to be seeing tons of people using flying cars this year, I don't think, but uh, it's cool that there is one that exists. Next up, we've got the mission to Mars. In season 27, episode 6, Lisa Simpson, along with the rest of the family, volunteers for a colonization mission to Mars. While the mission is originally set for a date in the future, it gets bumped up due to fear of loss of funding. When it comes time for the space shuttle to launch, Marge and Lisa are strapped in, but ultimately the mission is a failure and the shuttle never actually leaves the ground. If you can't see the connection between this episode's events and current advancements in space travel and technology, you might want to brush up on your current events. Elon Musk has been talking about the colonization of Mars for ages. He even built an entire company, SpaceX, around the goal of colonizing the red planet. In fact, in 2023, the SpaceX Starship was launched. The event ultimately ended in flames because the thing exploded just four minutes after takeoff. Luckily, the ship was unmanned. But based off of The Simpsons, it is possible that this year we will see a manned mission launched into space. I mean, it is only natural with the trajectory of the company. And the goal is experimenting with humans' ability to reach Mars. I just hope this launch goes better than the last one. Oh, and by the way, at the end of the episode, a quick clip shows the successful colonization of Mars, which is set to take place in 2051. So stay tuned tuned for that video. Next on the list, we have the baby translator. So in the season three, episode 24, brother can you spare two dimes, Homer's brother Herb invents a device that allows a parent to figure out what their infant's cries mean. They're not really saying much, are they? I need some food. You're not getting a whole lot of info out of these things, I'd imagine. What a godsend, though, a piece of tech like this would be, just to immediately know and then, you know, deal with the issue. Well, turns out there is something like it already in the works, and we're not even halfway through the year yet, so who knows, we may start seeing it get used later in 2024. The company behind the tech is called Zoundream, and they're making some pretty interesting strides in infant care tech. On their site, they describe their cry analysis tech. Here's what it says on the site. Using a comprehensive multimodal approach, we've investigated infant cries, analyzing various aspects such as acoustics, electroencephalography, EEG signals, regional cerebral oxygen saturation, NIRS, facial expressions, and other specific parameters. All these studies have helped us to develop our advanced cry analysis technology. There you go. That explains it. You don't even need to buy one of these things. I can just analyze my own acoustics and electrocephnologs and cerebral uh, cortexes and specific parameters. I'll be able to translate babies. Next up, we've got the government trying to control us, surprise, surprise, through a series of subconscious processes, including music induced mind control. In season 12, episode 14, New Kids on the Black, I don't know why it's called that, a music producer takes Bart, Nelson, Milhouse, and Ralph to form a boy band, Party Posse. Their first song was a top hit, but it was also subliminal mind control. The chorus, Ivan et Nioj, was actually Join the Navy spelt backwards, and soon the population of Springfield was scrambling to secure a spot serving their country. When Bart's sister Lisa confronted the music producer he admitted that he was in fact a Navy lieutenant and that subliminal messaging in music had been a long-standing strategy in recruiting young men into the military. With the way the world stands today, we might very well see an uproar in military propaganda in the coming months. Whether or not that takes the form of subliminal
original messages in hit pop songs remains to be seen, but if any of these other Simpsons predictions are a staple, a reminder, I can't think of the word, it's likely. Alright, in season 21's Treehouse of Horror episode, there is a segment called Don't Have a Cow Mankind. So here Krusty the Clown introduces a new type of crusty burger with meat made from cows who have eaten other cows. That's just hilarious. And oddly believable. I could see a fast food company, like a really dirty fast food company, just being like, it's mega meat! All these cows eat are other cows, brother! Anyway, this new burger causes like a mad cow type disease in the town of Springfield, turning people into zombies, or munchers as they're called in this episode. Now again, it's not like the Simpsons invented a zombie apocalypse by any stretch, but with how many things that have played out in real life with an eerie similarity to events in the Simpsons, I'm just gonna stay away if any new fast food burger comes out this year with some new weirdo meat, especially if it's meat coming from a cow that grazed on beef. That is funny in a cartoon, vomitrocious in real life. Trump's presidency. I swear, this is the prediction that started it all. Back in 2000s, The Simpsons aired an episode titled Bart to the Future. Basically in this episode, Bart gets a glimpse into what the future is gonna be like. In the episode, we see that Lisa Simpson is the president and is attempting to rebuild the economy after President Trump has left the office. In the episode, during a cabinet meeting, we see Lisa in the Oval Office as she talks about the aftermath of President Trump's reign. She actually uses the words, President Trump. And then fast forward a couple of years later, Trump indeed became president. Now this shocked a lot of people because how did they predict his presidency 16 years before it actually happened? Like, that's just too freaky. Coming in at number 9 we have the economic prediction. And if you guys are liking this video so far then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because you know what, it really helps us out. In the same episode and the same scene I was just talking about, we see what happens after Trump leaves office. While in the show Lisa ends up being his successor, which obviously is not going to happen in real life because she's not real. We do see something that Lisa has to deal with that might be similar to what Joe Biden will have to deal with. In the episode after being voted the next president, Lisa mentions how she will be taking office in a time where the economy is really, really struggling. And you know what? The pandemic has had an unprecedented effect on not just the American economy, but has truly impacted our global economy as well. It's kind of crazy how they not only predicted the fact that President Trump would win the election, but also just more detail about him leaving office. I honestly would love to take a peek at the crystal ball that the writers seem to have. Coming in at number 8 we have the election results. Back in 2012 it said that the Simpsons managed to predict the exact outcome of the 2020 election results. This one is fairly creepy. So the prediction takes place in a Fox special called Mr. Burns Endorses Romney, and it was for the 2012 presidential election. It's only a minute and 50 seconds long, but in it we see Mr. Burns in front of a map, showing the red and blue states for the election. What's freaky is that they look very similar to the 2020 Biden and Trump electoral map. I mean, at first glance, it looks identical, meaning the Simpsons somehow predicted the outcome of each and every state. Upon closer inspection, they did get one thing wrong, which was Arizona. The show had it as a red state, but in reality it was blue. So, how did they manage to pretty much get the exact election results? Keep in mind, the episode is 8 years old. Coming in at number 7 we have Trump's death. This image of an animated President Trump in a coffin has circulated the internet many times, especially in the last four years. In 2020, the image gained much more popularity after President Trump, as well as his wife, were tested positive for the coronavirus. Then people began to speculate that The Simpsons predicted President Trump passing away. Last year, there was a TikTok that went viral telling people that on the 27th of August, something big was going to happen. More and more people began to run with this trend, and soon everyone was talking about what was going to happen on the 27th of August, and it ended up getting linked to this image from The Simpsons. People were saying that the episode had predicted his death and that it would occur on that date. Well obviously that didn't happen, as it turns out the picture was actually fake. While most people assumed it was a still taken from an episode, this actually never happened once throughout the series. But who knows, maybe in the future The Simpsons will come out with an episode that will have that. Who knows? And at number 6 we have the Civil War. With the events that took place on January 6 at Capitol Hill, the hashtag Civil War is trending on Twitter. A lot of people are scared that a war will break out once Joe Biden takes Trump's spot at president. 
Let's hope that's not the case. But people quickly turn to The Simpsons to see how this might pan out. You know, because they're psychic. In particular, let's look at the Treehouse of Horror Halloween special. In this special, which aired on November 1st, 2020, it starts with Homer having to vote for either Putin or Trump in the election. Fast forward, the episode cuts to a scene that says January 20th, 2021, Inauguration Day. And it's basically the apocalypse. Homer is on his roof wearing pots and pans as armor, typical Homer, while his town is destroyed and on fire. Obviously, inauguration hasn't happened yet, but people are fearful that when it does, a civil war will happen and that this Simpsons prediction will come true. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the statue stealing. Now, there are two instances of statue stealing that I want to talk about that may have foreshadowed that photo that I'm sure you guys have all seen of one of the rioters carrying the podium around after he stormed Capitol Hill. The first time is in an episode called The Telltale Head, where we see Bart steal the head of the Jebediah Springfield statue. The second instance is from season 11, episode 12, called The Mansion Family. In this episode, as the family is leaving an award show, after Homer didn't win an award, we see him attempting to drag a much larger version of the award statue out of the venue with him. He exclaims to the family, what a great night it was for everyone, before Marge quickly lets him know Know that the statue is not an award, but actually is set decoration. While this isn't an exact prediction of the events that we saw at Capitol Hill, that guy carrying the podium probably could have just used some of Marge's advice. And when you compare the images side by side, it does look a little freaky. In our fourth spot, we have Ivanka 2028. In the season 28 Halloween episode of The Simpsons, right at the beginning, we see the family dressed up in costumes as they are trick or treating. Homer is dressed as Bender from Futurama, which is a hilarious crossover joke, but that's not why we're here. At one point, Homer opens up the front part of his costume to reveal that he's wearing an Ivanka 2028 pin. Now, it's only 2021, so we don't know if she's gonna run in 2028. Who knows, okay? It's The Simpsons. It could happen. Moving on to number three, we have The Rioter. On January 6th of 2021, an angry mob of President Trump's supporters stormed Capitol Hill. As you've probably heard, there were thousands of rioters that showed up to cause violence and you get the gist. They began smashing windows and vandalizing the building, and the rioters ended up getting into the Senate chamber, where prior, the election results were being certified. Many were seen waving Trump 2020 flags or wearing Keep America Great memorabilia. After this happened, an image started circulating on Twitter of what happens to be groundskeeper Willie, wearing an outrageous outfit with tattoos and face paint on his body. In fact, it was the same outfit that a rider named Jake Angeli was wearing as he stormed Capitol Hill. Both Willie and Jake were seen wearing a fur hat with horns sticking out. They had face paint on their face in the colors of the American flag, and they have the same tattoos. This freaked everyone out. Like, how could the Simpsons predict this down to every last detail? Now, it turns out that this prediction is false. It had been photoshopped on purpose to look like the rioter. But the Simpsons may have still predicted the riots. Which takes me to my next point. And at number two, we have the riots. So let's continue on with the recent riot that happened at Capitol Hill. What's creepy is the fact that the Simpsons might have predicted this in a number of different episodes. One of the times was during an episode titled Beyond Blunderdome, which was released in 1999. This episode features Mel Gibson and is meant to be a parody of the film Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. In this episode, Mel's character starts shooting at congressmen and causes hell on the Senate floor. It ends with him blowing up the building. Thankfully, that did not happen, but people think that this episode foreshadows what is yet to come. And in our number one spot, we have the storming of Capitol Hill. Again, another very scary prediction about Capitol Hill. For this, let's take a look at the 1996 episode titled The Day the Violence Died. This episode was meant to be a parody of the 1976 Schoolhouse Rock segment, I'm Just a Bill. The Simpsons version was, I'm an amendment to be. In the episode when the amendment is ratified, the character then says, doors open boys, to which a ton of other amendments or bill looking characters start storming up the steps of the Capitol Hill building. They're holding a bunch of weapons to defend themselves. Some have been making the comparison that this is what the actual scene at the Capitol building looked like on January 6th. It's pretty creepy. The Higgs boson particle. In season 10, episode two of The Simpsons, 
Homer becomes inspired by the work of Thomas Edison. As a result, he tries to become an inventor. In one scene, we see Homer scribbling on a chalkboard. At the bottom, it reveals a math equation, which wasn't thought to be anything big, you know, just Homer doing some scribbles. Until more than a decade later, when scientists discovered the Higgs boson particle, otherwise known as the God particle. People then realized Homer's work was a lot like this particle. Like, what kind of sorcery is this? Do they got a team of scientists working for them or something? Seriously, the writers either must be super smart, or they have psychic powers. Or both. And at number 9, we have the Grease Scheme. And if you guys like this video and you want to see more videos from us, then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, because it really helps us out. So in the 1998 episode titled Lord of the Dance, which is from season 10 episode 1, Homer comes up with an idea to steal grease from a bunch of places, like his kid's school cafeteria, and then he sells it to make a quick buck. Well guess what? People started doing this in real life. In New York, people were going around stealing grease from restaurants. It was so bad that apparently $75 million worth of grease gets stolen each year. Restaurants had to start hiring people to safely remove their grease so that people wouldn't break in and steal it. Sounds absolutely crazy, right? Well, somehow, The Simpsons knew that this was going to happen. Or maybe people were influenced by Homer in that episode. Either way, it's pretty creepy. In our eighth spot, we have The Outbreak. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty creeped out when I found out that The Simpsons might have predicted COVID-19. Seriously, it's really creepy. So in the 1993 episode titled Marge in Chains, a mysterious virus from Asia plagues the town of Springfield. In the episode, a sick factory worker coughs into a bunch of boxes that they were shipping out to Springfield. As a result, tons of Springfield residents get sick with this flu. The flu spreads quickly throughout the town and soon a number of residents become ill. On top of that, the doctor says the best way to combat the flu is to stay at home. Okay, that's pretty creepy. Seems an awful lot like what's going on currently. So in 1993, The Simpsons predicted this current outbreak. Not only that, but in the same episode, they had these killer bees. A bunch of townsfolk knock over a crate labeled killer bees when looking for the cure. Well, a couple months ago, we had the scare of murder hornets. So tell me how The Simpsons managed to get two predictions right in one episode. Like the same episode. They knew that murder hornets were gonna be a thing at the same time there was an outbreak. It's crazy. Moving on to number seven, we have the tiger attack. In 2003, Roy Horn from the duo Siegfried and Roy was attacked on stage by their white tiger. Thankfully, he survived the attack. But it seems like The Simpsons predicted this 10 years before it even happened. So let's take a look at the 1993 episode titled Springfield, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Legalized Gambling. What a title. In this episode, we see two magicians named Gunter and Ernst. They worked in a casino and had a magic show where they displayed white tigers. Sound familiar? Well, in this episode, while performing a show, the tiger lashes out and attacks both the handlers in front of a crowded audience. So you're telling me that The Simpsons made an episode that's a parody of Siegfried and Roy, and then years later the exact thing happens to them? Yeah, that's some weird voodoo stuff going on there. I don't like that. And at number six, we have the three-eyed fish. So in The Simpsons, the three-eyed fish is known as Blinky. It's a mutated fish that gets discovered after Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant. This happened in season two, episode four, which aired back in 1990. Fast forward to 2011, and there are headlines about an Argentinian man who caught a three-eyed fish while out on a fishing trip with some friends. Turns out that the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility, and clearly the water gets polluted. The fisherman said that it was dark at the time and they didn't really notice the fish, but then when they looked at him with the flashlight, they saw his third eye. How convenient. A three-eyed fish. Just like in The Simpsons. 
We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with 9 11. There are a bunch of cartoon shows that have been thought to have predicted the tragedy that occurred on September 11th, 2001. One of them being Johnny Bravo. The other one, of course, being The Simpsons. In a 1997 episode titled New York City Against Homer, we see Lisa hold up a magazine. The camera punches in on it and it reads New York, $9 a day. Behind the $9, it appears to be the Twin Towers. The way that everything is formatted, it looks like it says 9 9-11. At this point, I don't even know what to believe. Moving on to number four, we have Capitol Hill. Of course, you all know by now that on January 6th of this year, an angry mob of President Trump supporters stormed Capitol Hill. Well, turns out that The Simpsons may have warned us that this would happen. For this, let's take a look at the 1996 episode titled The Day the Violence Died. This episode was meant to be a parody of the 1976 Schoolhouse Rock segment, I'm Just a Bill. The Simpsons version was, I'm an amendment to be. In the episode when the amendment is ratified, the character says, doors open boys, and then a bunch of amendment or bill looking characters start storming up the steps of the Capitol Hill building. Some have then linked this scene to what happened at Capitol Hill on January 6th. So I don't get how they do it, but they do. Like, what magical powers do they have? Do they have a crystal ball or something? Let me know. Coming in at number three, we have advanced technology. So somehow the Simpsons knew how technology was going to be like for us in the future. A lot of these predictions were made in the 1995 episode titled Lisa's Wedding. In this episode, Lisa visits a psychic that shows her what her future is like. And in one scene, we see Lisa's husband, Hugh, talking to a watch, which then literally turns into a phone. Sound familiar? Watch that you can use as a phone? Yeah, an Apple Watch. In this episode, they also predicted FaceTime. Since there's a scene where we see Lisa talking to her family on what looks like a FaceTime call or a video chat or whatever, I don't know. Again, this was done back in 1995, and the Apple Watch came out in around 2014. So the Simpsons are just always ahead of the game. Coming in at number two, we have the NSA spying scandal. In 2013, a former contractor for the CIA, Edward Snowden, revealed that the US National Security Agency, the NSA, was collecting phone records of millions of Americans. Dun, dun, dun. So they were spying on us. Well, not me, I'm Canadian. But they were spying on people through their phone calls, and they probably still are. But anyways, in the 2007 Simpsons movie, they literally predicted that this would happen. So in the movie, the Simpsons family flee Springfield and are hiding from the EPA. Well, in one scene, Marge warns her family to be careful because people could be listening in on their conversations. Then it cuts to a room filled with NSA agents listening in on a bunch of people's calls. It's like they knew from the beginning we were being spied on by the government. I mean, we all had our suspicions, but the Simpsons actually said it out loud and they were correct. I'm starting to think that they have insider info. And in our number one spot, we have the horse meat scandal. Okay, all of the predictions so far are pretty creepy, but this one goes beyond that. So in 2013, the horse meat scandal was a huge food industry scandal in which foods declared as 100% beef were found to have horse meat mixed in with it, along with some other animals. Countries such as France, Iceland, England, Russia, Ireland, and Sweden were affected by this scandal. And as gross as it is, the Simpsons predicted it. So this was predicted in an episode back in 1994 in which lunch lady Doris is feeding kids mystery meat. More specifically in season five, episode 19, Doris serves the kids from a large container reading assorted horse meat. And guess what? Kids lunches were affected by this horse meat scandal. So what are the odds? Like honestly, Simpsons, you can tell me that it was meant to be a joke, but I don't know. This one is pretty weird. I honestly think that that was a warning for us. Then we have teleportation. Mm. I take it from that little impressed noise that you are interested in purchasing that matter transporter, sir. The Simpsons created this scene that took place at a garage sale, and what was up for sale was this teleporting machine. This episode seemed way into the future, because the machine was being sold for just two dollars, as if it was like just a normal item. Two bucks, and it only transports matter? Well, uh, I'll give you 35 cents. 
Sold. Homer Simpson bought it. He, he, he was kind of unsure about it, but he bought it and he took it home to use. He put one of the devices on the bottom of his stairs and he put the other device on the top of his stairs and that's what he used the machine for. So now he never has to use the stairs again. I'm pretty sure there are much better ways to use a teleporting machine. What would you guys use a teleporting machine for? Let me know in the comment section below. And please give me better ideas than Homer Simpson. Next up, number nine, I think it would be awesome in 2020 to have our first ever female president of America. Excellent question. Yes, I am proud to be America's first straight female president. <laughs> Helen? Wasn't I wearing a hat? Yes, yes you were. Presidency has been around since 1789 and for hundreds of years, there just never was a female president. I don't know why. I think it's time to change that. Hillary Clinton was very close to being the first ever female president of America. Well, we should see a higher number of females running for presidency in 2020. I know President Donald Trump would be devastated to be beaten by a female, but I think it's time for change. Imagine Oprah running. I think she would beat him for sure. Others who would probably beat Trump is Ellen DeGeneres, Michelle Obama, Taylor Swift, Beyonce. Let's add her onto this list. She'd be the best singing president of all time. And actually, you know what? Thinking about it, I could probably list so many people that would be awesome presidents in 2020. Who do you guys think should be the next American president and list females only? And if it had to be a male who's going to be the next president, I would vote for Morgan Freeman. And let's just hope he gives speeches like very often because I would just listen to him and whatever he said, I would just say yes. And I would listen to the president until I fell asleep at night, like every single night. Is that, is that a little creepy? I think so. So you know what? Let's, let's move on. Let's move on to number eight. From teleporting to a female president and now to time traveling to the past, because why not? How sick would that be? I don't even know where I would go. I've gone back to the time when dinosaurs weren't just confined to zoos. I would probably go back in time to confirm a few things. Maybe find out who the first flat earther was. I would want to witness the first moon landing, maybe take a look at some dinosaurs, maybe find out what actually wiped them out. And I would also time travel to find out what came first, the chicken or the egg, because that is a pretty important thing to figure out. Number seven, hovering of vehicles. Okay, who knows, this one can actually be reality soon. Technology is advancing so much, so why not? How awesome would this be? You don't have to worry about traffic ever again. You can just fly over vehicles. It won't be scary to drive in the winter time because you don't have to worry about slipping on ice. Concepts for flying cars have already started. It seems very scary, but flying in airplanes used to be terrifying, but now it's a pretty normal thing. At number six, we have commercial jetpacks. Jetpacks for everyone. Jetpack for you, jetpack for you, jetpack for Oprah. The Simpsons had an episode where Chief Officer Wiggum became the sky police. Imagine this. I'm not the police anymore. I'm the sky police. Uh, ah, ah. Okay, okay. I think I got it. I think this would be so cool. I would never be late for work ever again. I could just jetpack to the studio. I mean, jetpacks have been around, but not for commercial use. Imagine it being sold at Walmart. With this, the only fully functional jetpack in the world. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Moving into number five, imagine magic is real. Well, take a look at this. Sweet, sweet gold. Why didn't you ever tell us you could do magic? Now this would either be awesome or a really bad thing, a horrible idea. You wouldn't want magic to be in the wrong hands. Maybe if we can have like some sort of quality control over magic, it would be so amazing to have. We could magically create food for countries that doesn't have enough food. We can create water and we can even cure people. With magic, there's just an endless amount of things that we can do. Imagine we only had so much magic in the world. I wonder how we would vote and what we would use the magic for. Like what if we had like only like a hundred spells and that's it. I don't know what the most important thing is right now with trying to fix the world. This has me thinking way too much, so you know what, let's move on to something else. Something like cloning. Well, cloning comes up at number four. 
Imagine being able to make two of yourselves. Chores would be done so much faster and if you want days off of work, you could just send your clone into work. Or maybe you can have like 10 jobs so you can bring in more money. Because the economy these days, it just sucks. So cloning people would either be the best thing or the worst idea ever. But you heard it first here on The Simpsons. Finally pay it off. Well, at least I got my health. Alright, moving on to number three. Imagine having the ability to bring people back to life. Who would you guys bring back? I would bring back so many people. Well, in a Simpsons episode, in the future, Bart Simpson was brought back to life with a quick zap of a gun. Say, let's bring him back to life by using technology. Hi, Karumba! And actually, scientists are already working on bringing people back to life. People are cryogenically freezing themselves in the hopes that one day they'll be brought back to life. For example, if some people have cancer and they're losing the battle, they'll try to freeze themselves in time, hoping that in the future when technology comes around, they'll be able to cure them. And then they can be melted down and cured. Organizations are actually charging people as much as $200,000 to have this done. I don't know how I feel about this whole thing and if it's going to be even possible to one day revive the dead, but you know what? It's an interesting thought to think about. Number two, personalized robots. With their new love bots. <laughs> Make me a Bloody Mary doll face. No, Soma. Even a robot built only to love you cannot love you. I am leaving with your sister's concudroid. <laughs> Imagine your own robot. I honestly think this could be a reality. They can help you with everyday tasks. There would be no more loneliness. Not too long ago, China, they actually just debuted their first AI news anchor and it's just incredible. It's scary though. The future seems to be closer than we think. Take a look at this. Hello, everyone. I'm an English artificial intelligence anchor. This is my very first day in Xinhua News Agency. My voice and appearance are modeled on Zhang Zhao, a real anchor with Xinhua. The development of the media industry calls for continuous innovation. Is this real life right now? How is that a robot? It's just too real. It's pretty scary when you think about it. And didn't we just have a robot last year become the first ever robot citizen of Saudi Arabia? So, hold on, can you solve this puzzle for us? Can robots be self-aware, conscious, and know they're robots? Well, let me ask you this back. How do you know you are human? Finally, at number one, superpowers. Imagine science figure out a way to give everyone superpowers. Well, maybe not the criminals. I, I would probably pass on them. But how awesome would this be? The radioactive explosion gave us the power to move things with our intellect. Flowers for the lady. <gasps> <laughs> Bart, what powers did your brain give you? Just imagine the Harry Potter movie being real. I don't think everyone having superpowers would be good, but what if a selection of people who were highly trained enough, well, they were the ones that were allowed to have superpowers to fight justice. They would be called superhero crime fighters. Having superpowers could save millions of lives, but given in the wrong hands, it might destroy millions of lives. So maybe we gotta rethink that one. Spot, we have Prince Philip's passing. Last year in April of 2021, Prince Philip, the husband to Queen Elizabeth II, passed away. And it is said that the Simpsons might have predicted his death right down to the day. In season seven, episode three, home sweet, home diddly, dumb doodly, <laughs> the Simpsons neighbors, the Flanders, temporarily take the children in after a lice outbreak. Apparently they're all driving in a car on the way to church and baby Maggie suddenly just turns her head to Bart and Lisa and says, quote, Prince Philip will die on April 9th, 2021. Okay, it's probably the most on the nose prediction. And all I can say is, how? Apparently the line has since been replaced in recent versions, but it is said that this is actually what was said in the original broadcast, which happened in 1995, 26 years before his actual passing. It truly is one of those chilling Simpsons predictions moments. In our number nine spot today, we have the Queen's passing. There are many viral TikToks that have been going around since the Queen's passing that suggest that the Simpsons actually predicted her death. The episode in question is season 15, episode four, the Regina monologues, 
which we will be talking about a few more times today. But to start off with, we have this recent rumor. The TikToks have been edited with certain footage in a way that suggests that this episode did in fact predict the Queen's death. But when we watch the entire episode, that is likely not the case at all. The episode doesn't show the way in which the Queen passed, and also, she doesn't even die in the episode. While this was a very clever trick to get a viral TikTok video, it looks like this is one time when we've all been bamboozled, and the writers didn't quite predict our reality. In our number 8 spot today, we have the accident. Okay, so we just talked a little bit about the Regina Monologues episode, but that is not where the predictions end for this one. In the episode, the Simpson family rents a Mini Cooper and they start driving around London. Marge is shocked at how well everything is going on their first trip to England, but of course that can only last for so long. They get stuck on a roundabout, which is honestly a universal experience. I mean, they're so confusing when you're not used to them. Why do they even exist? And the family starts to drive in circles for hours. Homer finally decides that enough is enough and decides to break out of the roundabout. When he does this, however, he plows straight through the gates of Buckingham Palace and he slams into Queen Elizabeth II's horse-drawn carriage. Now, we know this didn't happen in real life, but this could be a prediction that something similar might happen in real life. Probably not as a result of a roundabout, but people try to do strange things when it comes to protected places. People try to sneak into Buckingham Palace all the time. It wouldn't necessarily be surprising to see something like this happen, but hopefully this is just a premise that will stay in the animated show where it truly does belong. In our number 7 spot today, we have Standing Trial. After this horse-drawn carriage accident, Homer has no idea who he just knocked down and he starts trying to sort of brush the whole thing off. Of course, this isn't accepted and immediately the Scots guardsmen start beating him to a pulp. After this, however, Homer is put on trial for causing harm to the Queen, as well as for wrecking her carriage. On trial, Homer calls the Queen an imposter because her luggage has the inscription HRH. Of course, meant to mean Her Royal Highness, Homer suggests that this is actually short for Henrietta or Hippo. Can totally see how he got there. Rather than believing this is a prediction that the Queen is really Henrietta Hippo, some people believe that this is just a grim prediction for a monarch's future. Of course, there are plenty plenty of safety protocols put in place, but some are worried that this might mean that this episode might be predicting that we will see someone stand trial in the future for trying to harm the head of state. Whether or not you enjoy the royal family, it's safe to say that most people hope that they don't get harmed, either intentionally or otherwise, so hopefully this is one prediction that just does not come true. In our number 6 spot today, we have the sentencing. For the final prediction that comes with this whirlwind of an episode, after Homer accuses the queen of being Henrietta R. Hippo, she is of course outraged and she sentences him to being imprisoned in the Tower of London, later to be executed by beheading, and to have his head placed on a spike. In the end, the Queen does pardon Homer, but some have suggested that this might be a prediction that we might see some old historical and horrifying royal practices come back in the future. We'll talk about a similar kind of prediction with another royal family member later in this list, but some people believe that these sort of gruesome forms of capital punishment might end up coming back. To end off this episode, the Queen only agrees to pardon Homer on the condition that the Simpson family take Madonna with them when they left. I don't think that part is any kind of real prediction, I just wanted to include it because it's pretty funny. In our number 5 spot today, we have royal spying. In an episode of The Simpsons, the now King Charles III, along with his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, can be seen watching over Springfield. They're doing this through surveillance cameras that have been planted all over the town. Some people have suggested that this perhaps is a prediction that could already be happening or might be something that our future holds. It's safe to say that the UK already does have its fair share of CCTV cameras, which for many reasons is great, but of course people worry about being spied on, which is entirely fair. I don't necessarily think that the royal family just sits around spying on everyone, but there is definitely potential that they, or people working from them, know more than anyone would like to know. Making the royal family sound like the CIA, but who knows? The Simpsons have definitely predicted stranger things. In our number 4 spot today, we have The Tyrant. This is one prediction that The Simpsons made that, while hopefully unlikely, we'll definitely just have to wait and see to find out. In The Simpsons, while Prince Harry doesn't make a lot of appearances, they do include him in the show, of course, and they have quite a grim prediction for his future self. They suggest that perhaps in the future, Prince Harry has risen to power. It's not so bad. Prince Harry is certainly one of the more likable members of the royal family. I know for some of you that's a hot take, but regardless. Although Harry is not in line for the throne and has almost mostly renounced his royalty, he is still part of the family and, again, Stranger things have happened. Once in power, however, things go awry and Harry proves to be an entirely different person than anyone would have expected. In The Simpsons, once in power, Harry becomes a ruthless tyrant who is so bad that he 
reinstates capital punishment, but this time he's taking a tip from his ancestors. It's not just regular, modern day capital punishment that we see now, it is of course in royal family fashion, done in the form of beheadings. In our number 3 spot today we have Out of Control. This is another Simpsons prediction that, depending on how you look at it, could be one that you could say did come true. When the Simpsons family went to England, most of the newspapers in the episode showed that they were reporting on the trial of Homer for harming the Queen. Of course, that's like one of the central focuses of the episode, so it makes a lot of sense, but there is one paper that has a different headline. In the episode, it's actually the Daily Mail, and they have the headline, quote, Bart and Prince Harry out of control, and it shows a picture of the two outside of a bar. Now, I'm not saying that Prince Harry went on a pub crawl and got messy with Bart Simpson, but there are people who didn't enjoy how Prince Harry has chosen to live his life. We all have haters, no worries Prince Harry, but many people would suggest that his behavior is, quote, out of control. I personally disagree, but I know not everyone does. It's safe to say that Prince Harry likely won't be seen outside of any bar on a newspaper cover anytime soon, but who am I to say for sure? In our number 2 spot today we have King Henry VIII. Less of a prediction for the future, considering this episode was strictly about historical figures, season 15 episode 11, Margical History Tour, takes us back in time and shows us a Simpsons version of the life of King Henry VIII. Known for being quite a terrible person and an absolutely horrible husband, the episode, while of course taking quite a few liberties, really is surprisingly accurate for a comedy animation show. The king was married six times and in the episode he beheads quite a few of his wives. In reality it was only two, but still two is more than enough for us in the future to add a couple extra in for dramatic effect. While this episode is just a fun premise for a silly episode, some worry that this might be a prediction for how the royal family might fall back into some old practices. Queen Elizabeth II was incredibly loved by those who support the monarchy, and it's safe to say that her successor does not have the same kind of adoration. This makes people worried that things might end up in a more grim place than how the Queen left them. In our number 1 spot today we have Prince Christian. A departure from the British royal family, this young prince made a debut in the animated show. Prince Christian of Denmark, who is now 16, is 12 years old in the episode. The Simpsons family travels to Denmark for a medical treatment for Grandpa, and it is here that Lisa meets the man of her dreams, the skateboarding prince. The episode skips to the future and it shows Lisa and the prince getting married and waving from their balcony. Of course, no one thinks that this very real prince is going to marry the very fictional Lisa Simpson, but some believe that perhaps this might be a prediction for the future of the prince's love life. Normally royal marriages are strategic, but it's possible, similar to Prince Harry, that Prince Christian might just meet his future love in a more non-traditional fashion. The prince is obviously still quite young, so only time will tell with this one. Have when the Simpsons predicted that Canada would legalize weed. So this prediction came from a 2005 episode during its 16th season on The Simpsons, where the Canadian version of Flanders offered weed to the American version. Watch. Well, circle cut my bacon. Look at all these Yankee doodly dandies. Is there another Vietnam going on? Hello, neighborie. Say, would you like to puff on a reeferino? It's legal here. They warned me Satan would be attractive. Back in 2005, it seemed very unlikely that a country would legalize such a drug. Uruguay was actually the first country in the world to legalize the sale of cannabis for recreational use, and that wasn't until 2003. Canada became only the second country to follow Uruguay to legalize weed. So back in 2005, that was a very bold accusation by the Simpsons to make. And I was doing some research to see if any other countries legalize weed, and I was reading about Netherlands. And it was pretty it was a pretty interesting read and tell me if I'm wrong well apparently cannabis in the Netherlands it's actually illegal although we all believe that it was legal recreational consumption of the drug is tolerated I mean you can buy some at coffee shops it just seems like in the Netherlands so many people smoke weed that cops they just don't have the manpower to arrest everyone and they usually don't arrest people anymore as long as you have just a little bit of it something like five grams but if police officers want they can confiscate I'm not sure if you would get ticketed. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get arrested. All right, number nine, The Simpsons predicted Toys R Us shutting down. It was actually pretty funny in how they showed that Toys R Us was shutting down. All they did was they went up a ladder and they turned the R around, and then it, it, that, that means it shut down. Why don't you all fade away? 
Yeah, that was my reaction when I heard Toys R Us was shutting down. I was pretty sad about it. But for some reason, Toys R Us here in Canada, they're still around. So I did a little bit of research. Toys R Us has been around for over 70 years since the 40s, which sucks because it's technology, it's our lazy generation that is getting these big companies like this to shut down. People can just order on Amazon and online. I actually miss Blockbusters where you can actually go into the store, you can check out the new releases and you can rent them. But now I just sit in front of Netflix all day trying to pick what I want to watch. Going back to Toys R Us, the company's North American operations filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy production back in 2017. In 2018, they added their British operations into that as well. Earlier on this year, they announced that Toys R Us will be shutting down all of its US and British stores. I think by now most of them have been shut down. And for up here in Canada, well, we'll see what happens. At number eight, somehow the Simpsons predicted the Nobel Prize winner. Oh. We're watching the Nobel Prize announcements live from Stockholm. Oh, the Nobis. <laughs> for economics, Jagdish Bhagwati. Huzzah! I had him in the pool. Lucky. Milhouse is a pure genius and a psychic because he predicted the winner of the Nobel Prize back in 2010, which is six years before Holstrom actually won. Holstrom won the 2016 Nobel Prize in economics for work on contact theory and how to evaluate whether things should be government run or privately owned. It is in two ways because I think the, the, the first revolution occurred in 91 uh, when we had had almost 25 years of counterproductive policies, uh, which had before actually, that. before before 91. Number seven, back in 1998, the Simpsons episode, Lard of the Dance, you can see Homer and Bart Simpson decided to recycle grease for money. Sold it all to the rendering plant. People buy grease? Oh yes, they use it to make products such as soap, cosmetics, baby food. Used grease is worth money? <gasps> and my arteries are clogged with yellow gold. So after Homer found out that the grease can be sold for money, he started his own operation. And I get my money from grease. What's the problem? Wow, look at that load of grease. Boy, if we're ever gonna earn paper money, we have to expand our operation. Well, this actually became reality years later. In fact, 15 years later, people were caught stealing grease from restaurants in order to make some money. Listen to this. Soaring gasoline prices spawn a new kind of bizarre crime, <laughs> the stealing of grease. As in restaurant grease. Is this real life right now? Who the heck is buying restaurant grease? Well, apparently you can actually use grease to run your car instead of gas. So with the gas prices going up in New York, people actually started stealing cooking grease. So just when you thought you've heard it all. The Simpsons predicted the Rolling Stones will be on tour in 2010 during a 1995 episode. This bold prediction that came true is at number six. During the episode titled The Lisa's Wedding, there was also a scene where she was lying in bed and beside her was the Rolling Stones poster. And on the poster it said, Steel Wheelchair Tour 2010. We're both studying the environment, we're both utterly humorless about our vegetarianism, and we both love the Rolling Stones. Yes, not for their music, but for their tireless efforts to preserve historic buildings. Okay, did you guys see it? The Rolling Stones have had an incredible run. They've been touring since 1962. They are actually still touring today. Right now they're on their no filter tour. There doesn't seem to be any slowing down despite their age. During the 2010 episode, it looked like they were done touring after their successful Bigger Bang tour. At the time, it was the highest grossing tour of all time, earning over $550 million. And just when it seemed like the Rolling Stones, well, they might have been done touring, they toured again five years later, just like The Simpsons predicted. The legendary Mick Jagger is 75 years old, and he's still rocking out, and his concert tour will end next year in June. The drummer for the Rolling Stones, Charles Robert Watts, is 77 years old, and he's still beating the drum. The three-eyed fish prediction that came true is next up at number five. Well, this is my day, and we do, sir. <laughs> All right, we eat tonight. <laughs> Wait a minute. So that was one of the earliest episodes. That was episode 17 during season two. And it was when Bart caught a three-eyed fish. Little did we know that years later, it would become reality. 21 years after the episode aired, a fisherman in Argentina caught a three-eyed wolf fish. Here's a picture of it. It was caught in a reservoir near a local nuclear power plant. So that explains a bit. The fisherman caught the fish in the dark and didn't realize its third eye until he looked at the fish with the flashlight and he was totally shocked. He thought he caught a rare specimen 
specimen, but it was just a fish that was affected by the exposure to the water from the nuclear power plant. So this fish, it like totally mutated. I don't know if it was like evolving. And you know what? The Simpsons called it. Even in this episode, you can see the power plant. And this made headline news in Springfield, just like it made headline news in real life. Number four, the Simpsons predicted FaceTime years before FaceTime was even a thing. Take a look at this picture right here. This was from the Lisa's Wedding episode on the Simpsons that aired back in 1995. This was 12 years before the iPhones or smartphones even came out. The Simpsons predicted that one day people will be able to communicate through a video on their phones. Marge Simpson is seen here in a video on one of those really old phones. You know the phones that you had to put your fingers in the hole, you gotta turn it around and dial. I don't really know how it works. I've seen it in a museum one time and I remember seeing it at my grandma's house. Skype didn't even come out to 2003. So having a video call with someone was just unheard of. It was very futuristic. The Simpsons are for sure well ahead of their time. They know exactly what's happening and when. Now at number three, we have the Simpsons predicting Guitar Hero. Take a look at this picture right here. This was aired in 2002. You can see Mick Jagger and Keith Richards giving Homer Simpson a jacket that has Guitar Hero printed on the back of it. Three years after the episode aired, Guitar Hero actually came out. I don't know if the name of the game was inspired by the Simpsons, but it's pretty weird. What are you doing? We're playing the Guitar Hero. So that was actually one of the advertisements for Guitar Hero. I remember when this game came out and it was so sick. I got kind of good at Guitar Hero, but then I stopped because I think I just got used to all the same songs. I never really produced more of it. And I don't even know if they still produce newer Guitar Heroes, like versions, or if they've released more songs into the game. Roy's Tiger Attack is up next to number two. We hate to see this next one. <laughs> So that aired during the fifth season. Well, 10 years after that episode of 2003, this happened. October 3rd, 2003. Roy Horn near death and rushed into emergency surgery. So during the show, it was said that Roy was attacked by his own tiger, just like the Simpsons predicted. Well, there's actually an update on this story. Roy spoke about what happened 11 years after the tiger attack. Roy, who is German-American, is a magician and entertainer, and he works with his partner, Siegfried. There are videos online of the tiger attack during one of his shows, but everything wasn't what it seemed. So Roy actually passed out on the ground, and the tiger noticed Roy not moving, so the tiger grabbed Roy by his throat, like tigers do with their cubs, to try to help them. Well, you know what, let's hear Roy himself tell the rest of the story. Well, yeah, he, he took care of me. He said me, my, my artery is absolutely blessing because there's going to need blood pressure. How about you will be brain dead? You were saying, the doctor was saying that had Montecor not relieved the pressure, you would not have lived? So when everyone thought the tiger attacked Roy, the tiger actually saved his life. Doctors said that if it wasn't for the tiger relieving the pressure in his head, Roy would have been in a vegetable state. I mean, it's so crazy. So I guess the Simpsons, like, they sort of half predicted this one. Finally, number one, we have the donut-shaped universe theory. How the heck did the Simpsons predict this one? Imagine they also predict the flat earth theory as well. I mean, maybe they have. Your theory of a donut-shaped universe is intriguing, Homer. I may have to steal it. Wow, I can't believe someone I never heard of is hanging out with a guy like me. So it was Homer Simpson that came up with the donut-shaped Earth theory. And you know what, it was amazing seeing Stephen Hawking making another appearance on The Simpsons. He has made so many of them. I'd say, my IQ is 199 for crying out loud. 198, 197. Big deal, my IQ is 280. <gasps> Stephen Hawking! If you enjoyed this video about Simpsons predictions, then you have to check out this video next about cybersecurity threats that are predicted to end the world. Click the video now to find out more.